Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I just want to say thank you to everyone, first of all, at St. Pete B-Sides this weekend. I had a really, really good time. I really enjoyed meeting every single person in my workshop and in the conference. So thank you so much for that. If you guys are ready, today we're going to be talking about if I had to start over in 2024 in cybersecurity, pen testing, or whatever you want to call it, what would I do? So I was getting that question a lot this weekend. If you can start over, how would you approach it? So we're going to go over some steps and let's get into the video. All right, everyone. So the first step into mastering cybersecurity or what I would do if I was starting all over in 2024 is master the basics of IT, right? What does this actually mean? Maybe some basic networking, computer setups, system administration. What you can do is do basic network setups for your friends. Go to a local charity, go to a local church and say, hey, do you guys need any networking or computer setups just to plug it in, understanding when you hit the power button on a computer, when it boots up, what exactly is happening, right? So that's definitely the first step, right? Because in cybersecurity, fundamentals and understanding the solid system administration, maybe some light programming is super, super critical, right? I'd learn how to network computers, build computers, install operating systems. This is what I would do if I had to start all over, right? And understanding, first of all, understanding the fundamentals of networking, such as IP addresses, protocols, how data traverses across your basic network or your local network and across the web, right? When you send out a packet, when you go to google.com or facebook.com or youtube.com, what exactly is happening? So, and obviously some resources that you can use to get this knowledge is stuff like from CompTIA, you can do the IT Fundamentals Plus. They have a basic, basic one. Network Plus, A Plus, all of this will help you master the basics. That's number one, okay? So the second thing that I have when I wrote down on the way home is choose a specialization. What does this really mean? So for example, me, when I got into IT, I wanted to specialize in system administration, right? I got really good with Windows Server. I got really good with all the stuff, DNS, Active Directory, Windows clients, all that good jazzy jazz, right? So then I, trans I transitioned into network administration, network engineering, cloud engineering, and building out like VMware, understanding Cisco, routing, switching, firewalls, and all that stuff. And then that was my specialization, right? I was really, really good with firewalls. That was my specialization. I was really good with ASAs and firepower threat defense or FTDs and all that stuff. So that's where my specialty was before I got into the world of pen testing and offensive security and cybersecurity, right? So choose a specialization and I think that will be awesome, awesome for you. Like my specialization now is a little all over the place, right? For me personally, I like to do the blue team aspect and I like to do the offensive, right? So, but my specialization is probably pen testing in, in all honesty, social engineering, internals, externals, Wi-Fi pen testing. That's what I specialize in, right? Can I dabble in some other stuff? Absolutely. But I have my specialization and I know what I'm good at, right? So, and now what you can do is choose a path, right? Do you want to focus on pen testing? You want to focus on SOC analysts. You want to do cloud security. And once you actually choose whatever you want to dabble in and get better at, what you can do is specialize in that and start training in those areas, right? For an example, if you wanted to become a pen tester, you can start learning, you know, Burp Suite, Kali Linux, you know, Active Directory, depending on what you want to, you know, what avenue, what specialty you want to do in pen testing. For example, web app testing, you'll understand fuzzing, you have to understand burp suite, proxies, code, maybe code review and all the stuff that, you know, web pen testers do. If you want to be an internal assessor and you want to learn about Active Directory pen testing, you have to learn what Active Directory really is and understand the ins and outs of it. Because if you don't know how to build it, you don't know how to administer it, how can you attack it, right? Just think about that for a second. And the next step that I would say, this is probably one of the critical if you're getting into pen testing and even defensive stuff and SOC analysts is get hands-on practice, right? So practice, practice, practice. I got an itch on my nose. 
you can do this with my my course i do a lot of uh, practice hands-on for pen testing you can use hack the box you can use try hack me but i i believe home labs is where it's at create your own home lab and then transition to an online platform just because you can ha have an understanding of those fundamental knowledge before you start going on to the internet and hacking and that's just my recommendation that's what i did and this this video is all about what I would do if I had to start over. And these are the things I would do, right? Because cybersecurity is all about getting hands-on experience, right? So you have platforms like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and all this stuff. <clears throat> and then setting up your own home lab is essential for getting real hands-on and real-world experience, right? Learn how to solve, break your system legally. You can solve it maybe you join maybe this is real world right and this happened to me when i first started setting up my labs many many moons ago i would set up active directory for an example and when you set up active directory on your own if you do it with 2019 2022 server you have a dns server right so your dns server should point to the dc ip address normally so if you don't reassign, say for an example, your DC is 192.168.100.5, okay? And your gateway is .1. And now sometimes like if you reboot, you go back into your IPv4 settings, your DNS is probably gonna be the loopback 127.001. If you leave it as, as so, and you go to your Windows 10 machine and you try to join that computer, it's not gonna know where to find DNS. So what you have to do is have a preferred DNS server and point it to dot five in this example. And now on your, unless you have a DHCP server that's handing out DNS and all that stuff, but that's something on a different level. But if you want to get your Windows 10 onto your, onto your Active Directory, you have to make sure Windows 10 is pointing to 192.168.100.5 in that instance, right? For that example. So just make sure and breaking it you know, troubleshooting it, it's real hands-on. So I always recommend that hands-on. That's why I do a lot of workshops, hands-on labs, setting it up because things, things are really, really critical when you have the real world experience. And the next thing here I have on my screen that I've written down was get certified. <clears throat> so what does this mean? So you can get uh, prepared for uh, for an example for certifications from like TCM security, offensive security, hack the box, so many other things, right? PMPT, PJPT, EJPT, OSCP, CPTS. There's so many other certifications out there that you can prepare. Those are the ones that I would recommend because it's practical knowledge, right? It's not like going for your pen test plus or CEH or any of those because those are like multiple choice. Yes, you have the CEH practical, but at you know unless you're going for a government position yes yeah, ceh security plus those are mandatory they're not optional so i would always recommend that and remember if you get into a specialization for example like cloud maybe you'll do like azure security or aws security or whatever your specialty remember have a specialty and i think that is always really critical okay and then the next thing i have here is build a network and stay updated. What do I mean by that? So if you wanna have a network, like on LinkedIn groups, participate in different cybersecurity forums, you can go on Discord servers, you can go on local meetups, like I just went to B-Side St. Pete, it's not local for me, it's about five hours away, but I went there, I did a workshop, I got to network with folks, meet so many awesome people, and it's always, always good to network, especially when you're looking for a job and you're getting into the field, because now you're going to get together in a community with like-minded people and you can share your thoughts and what you want to do. And maybe they can guide you to that path, you know? So the industry obviously changes really, really fast, really quickly. And just stay up to date with like blogs, trainings, podcasts, uh, different kinds of events. That's always, always critical. If you're getting into the field or if I was to do this all over, these are the things I would do, right? And that's pretty much it. So that's my roadmap if I was to start again from scratch in 2024. So remember, stay curious, stay hands-on, keep pushing, keep learning. And obviously don't forget to like this video, subscribe, share it. And for any other tips and tricks, stay tuned.